Eva, can you see yourself there, Eva? There, say hi. Say hi, Eva. Eva. Today is Eva's first birthday. Say happy birthday, Eva. <laughs> Very good. Okay, November 19th. November 19th, 2019 is the the first birthday of Ava Grace Monet. So we are already all decked here and uh, celebrating this birthday. Huh? Yeah, well, I'm gonna show it later. Okay, let's go and let's go and do the commentary. It's gonna be a full day of celebration for Ava, uh oh, for Ava Grace. Okay, let's just put that up there. Okay. Here we go. Let's uh, do the commentary this morning. Oh, okay. There. You good? So, Gospel is from St. Luke, chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. This is a little long, so let's uh, start it out. At that time, so yesterday, where was Jesus yesterday? Who remembers? When he cured, when he cured the blind man, Bartimaeus, where was he? In Jericho. In Jericho, right? Well, he was, he was yet, uh, so this today is a continuation of that story. So yesterday we saw how Jesus cured Bartimaeus, the blind man, not quite inside Jericho yet. He was approaching Jericho. So it's by the roadside approaching Jericho. But as more and more people learned that he was coming, so people started gathering, gathering there in the town proper, eh? in the town proper. And this is what happened. So at that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. So he was just going to pass through, going to somewhere else. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was, seek, was seeking to see who Jesus was. Okay, now listen to the parallelism here. He was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd. For he was short in stature. What does that mean? He was, he was a short guy. Eh? And then everybody else was towering above him. So maybe he was behind all of these backs. And could, couldn't see where is, who's this Jesus? Who's coming around? Who's this Jesus? Right? Couldn't see him. So. Yesterday, we had a blind man who couldn't see Jesus also, right? But who, who knew that Jesus was there but couldn't see him. So he started yelling, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, right? Now here, we have another man who is not blind but also could not see Jesus. He also could not see Jesus. So yesterday, what did, uh, what did um, Bartimaeus do? He yelled to the top of his voice to attract attention, right? To attract Jesus' attention and ask to be healed. In the case of Zacchaeus, he was a short guy. So this is what he did. He ran ahead. He ran ahead uh, to whatever path, um, uh, you know, Jesus was, was headed to. And he climbed the sycamore tree in order to see Jesus. He climbed the tree. So he outsmarted all of the taller guys. He climbed the tree and there from the vantage point of the tree, he could look down and then he saw Jesus. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly. Do you think Jesus ever met Zacchaeus before? No, it's the first time. But Jesus knew everybody. Jesus knows each and every one of us. And calls us by name. The way he called Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Come down quickly. For today I must stay in your house. What? I haven't even met you. And I'm just here trying to find out who you are. How you look. And now you're telling me you're going to stay in my house? Imagine the surprise of Zacchaeus. Right? Not only did Jesus know him by name. But now, he's even inviting himself into the house of Zacchaeus, a tax collector, a chief tax collector, 
a wealthy man and just like most of the tax collectors they're unwanted by the Jews because they're collaborators with the Romans and they enrich themselves they help themselves with it with the collection of the taxes okay? so not a very good reputation as far as people are concerned and yet Jesus wants to go in his house okay so let's continue Zacchaeus came down quickly oh sorry no and he came down quickly and received him with joy received him with joy must have been so excited could you imagine this Jesus who is a so it's a superstar right everybody uh, wants to be with him wants to touch him wants to wants to have a word with him wants to be uh, noticed by them and yet he notices Zacchaeus so anyway so Zacchaeus is very happy when they saw this they began to grumble saying so here are the Jews already the self-righteous people who hated the tax collectors they began to grumble saying he has gone to stay at the house of a sinner but Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord behold half of my possessions Lord I shall give oh, Ava, half of my possessions I shall give to the poor and if I have extorted anything from anyone I shall repay it four times over and Jesus said to him today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a descendant of Abraham for the Son of Man has come not to seek but to save what was lost has come to seek rather and to save what was lost very beautiful story of well many things right Jesus seeking us out when we are lost like the lost sheep right that we are many times Jesus being the Good Shepherd wants to restore us to grace he wants to bring us back and that's what he did with this tax collector okay? he showed his compassion he showed interest on Zacchaeus and the parallelism we see with the blind man yesterday Bartimaeus wanted to see completely in this case Zacchaeus who couldn't see him also did something about it okay? he helped himself by climbing up a tree and then had a good view of Jesus and that view of Jesus converted him okay? when he saw Jesus the first time that he encountered Jesus he got converted and that's what happens to us and to our souls when we encounter Jesus when we get to know Jesus then it converts us it leads us to conversion it leads us to holiness it leads us to desires of becoming Saints Okay? So it's very important, this lesson that Zacchaeus uh, gives us today, okay? to try and seek out Jesus, as Jesus is also seeking us out at the same time. There has to be uh, 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 a, a common ground so that Jesus can dwell in our soul in grace, the way that he came to the house of Zacchaeus, because he wants to be with us. He wants to convert us. He wants to encourage us to become saints. But we have to welcome Him. First, we have to seek Him. We have to seek Him. Then we have to welcome Him the way Zacchaeus did. And look at what he did too, Zacchaeus. Another uh, very big lesson here that we have to understand is the lesson of justice and reparation and restitution. Eh? That when we commit sin, we have to learn to make up for the sins that we commit okay? it is not enough that it's not enough to just say I'm sorry for my sins we go to confession that's the reason why we have penance in confession it's to help us make up for the effects of sin okay so like Zacchaeus he said if I have uh, uh, defrauded anybody I'm going to give back four times what I owe them see the same thing is true with our lives when we commit sin we have to be ready to do reparation and restitution if it amounts to that what does restitu reparation means okay be sorry uh -uh. and repair the damage right to repair the damage that we have caused 
Restitution means to bring back not only, if possible, the same amount of whatever it is that we have damaged, but maybe even give more and do more than that. That's restitution. That's demanded by the virtue of justice. Okay? Now, think about this. In our lives, we'll be committing plenty of sins. Right? Even if we try to become saints, even if we are trying very hard to become saints, well, we are weak. And once in a while, we commit sin. Big sins, small sins, hopefully not big sins. But whatever kind of sin this is, no matter how small the sin is, we will always need to make up for them. We will always need to make up for them. Now, if we die without having made up for all of our sins, where will we go to make up for them? Where, Joe? Purgatory. See, purgatory. That is the reason why there is purgatory. So that we will have a second chance. Actually, uh, it's not anymore a second chance. This is going to be a clearing house. Okay? We already won heaven by the time we land in purgatory. <laughs> we have already won heaven. But we just need extra cleaning up, extra bathing, extra purification. So that when we, really, when we go and see Jesus face to face, we're really clean of all the impurities caused by sin. Now, but as we know very well, we don't need to wait for purgatory to make up. For the damage of sin. Okay? We can do that right here and now on earth. We have to make this earth our purgatory. We have to make up for our sins here on earth. So that when we die we go straight to heaven. Okay? We can skip purgatory if on this earth we try to live a life of penance and mortification. Okay? That is the kind of reparation and restitution we can make for our own sins. And that is why it's very recommendable that we uh, practice. We practice reparation, oh, sorry, mortification and penance while we are here on earth. So that we can skip purgatory altogether. And we have to pray for it. We have to pray that we skip purgatory. Right? So... Uh, by doing plenty of mortification here on earth. And it doesn't have to be big mortifications, right? Little things, little mortifications is where we can do plenty of reparation. Okay? Okay, everybody, that's it for us. Please pray for Ava Grace. It's her first birthday, and we're going to show Ava Grace again so that everybody will see Ava. Ava! Ava! Ava. Ava. There you are. Hi! Hi, Ava. Let's see you there. Show you there better. There. There, Ava. Ava. Hi! Ava Grace is one year old today. Hey, there. There you go. There you go. There you go, Ava Grace. Okay, say bye bye. Say bye bye. We gotta go. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye, Eva. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. Oh, you want to show that? Okay. Well, that's all the decoration they got there. Happy birthday to you. Okay. See you tomorrow, everybody. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.